Good afternoon, PLC1 students. This is Brandon Gonzalez again, I'm getting on here today to do a video about counters. So like timers, um, counters are much created the same way. You actually create them in your uh, either controller tags or parameters and local tags. Just for the sake of this lab, I'm going to do it in controller tags. So if I go here, you know, I had my blank program up. I'm just going to go here to controller tags. Then I see my timer I did yesterday and my local tag or my local inputs and outputs um, for my IO interface device that's connected to my L16. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to edit tags. And when I click there, it brings me here back to my blank. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a counter. Same way you do timers, you click in the data type, hit your three dots. You just start typing in counter. It should be the first thing that pops up. Now, remember, you can create a string of counters like you can timers. So I want to do, I'm going to get a counter, but I want to go ahead and create five of them. So I'm going to go over here to dim zero and just click that up to five and then hit OK. Now you see I have my five counters here. So I'm going to just go over here and give that a name. I'm just going to, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to call it um, B counter, I guess. You can name it whatever you want, but I just I don't want to call it counter because that's too generic, so I'm just going to call it B for Brandon's counter. Just click down here off of it, and now it has finalized, and you can see your five counters, zero through four. So now that we have those, we can go ahead and make a program that utilizes counters. So what does a counter do? A counter is going to basically, every time a certain set of conditions are, conditions are met, it's going to count up by one. Um, a, a counter up will. There's also counters down and retentive counters. But primarily for this video, I'm just going to go over uh, counter up for the purposes of this course. So every time a certain set of conditions are met on a rung, and then your counter is on the far right as an output, it's going to accumulate by one, like the timers do, except for you're just counting when the conditions are met. So just to make a real simple program, I'm going to add in three rungs here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a real simple program. I'm going to add in an XIC and an OTE. I'm just going to name this, uh, we'll just call it uh, switch one. So we go in here to find our address. This will be switch one, and we'll make this one uh, light one. Okay, now, um, to keep it real basic, actually, I guess I can go ahead and delete rung two here. We'll just use two rungs. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do this by adding another XIC. We're just going to use light one's address over here. So light one will affect our counter. So we go back here to timer counter and go ahead and get a CTU, which is count up. Click on that. Notice it looks very similar to a timer. You set the preset the same way you do a timer, but they're not in thousands. These are single digits. So we've got to find us an address. So we go to our drop down. Now you see B counter. Click that down, and we're just going to pick one of our counters. We pick B counter zero. So for B counter zero, we want to set a preset here. So what this is going to do is we're just going to say, I don't know, we'll just call it uh, five, just to keep it simple. Now, according to my program, every time I turn on switch one, light one will come on, and every time light one comes on, our counter will accumulate up by one. Let's go ahead and finalize this program. All right, so now I'm getting ready to turn on switch one, which will engage light one, which then light one as an XIC will engage our counter, and you'll see this accumulator go up to one. See, now I'm gonna turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, Turn it back on. Now notice it's gone up to three because I've turned it on and off three times. So if I turn it back on again, it goes to four. I'm going to turn it off. Turn it back on again. It goes to five. 
So now notice how your DN bit here got energized. Remember in the counters when you met your preset time, it would energize this. So this done bit can be used for um, limiting something or cutting something off after a certain amount of cycles. But right now it's not going to do anything. It'll just keep counting because I, I don't have it cutting anything off. So I'm going to show you real quick how we can uh, set this back up. So I'm just going to change that back to zero, so it'll take us back to square one. Show you a neat little trick here. If I go up to my favorites and I add an XIO to rung one and make this our, our counter done bit. So remember, we're counter zero. So I'm going to find that dot DN bit, which is right here. There we are. I'm going to finalize these edits. Now see your done bits energized by default. But once this accumulator reaches five, this done bit will energize on the counter, thus energizing this, with turning it on, which will basically de-energize it because it's an XIO. So if a program works like it should, I can turn on switch one five times and then it will not let me turn on light one anymore once our accumulator reaches five. Because once our done bit's energized, on the counter, it's going to de-energize this XIO, not allowing switch one to do anything. So now watch. One, two, three, four. Now when I click it on, this is where it should de-energize up top. I just turned it on for a fifth time. So this will only let light one energize five times and then it's cutting it off. So like I said, this is a good way if we're making a program that's gonna utilize a cycle, but say you only want it to go through that cycle five times, this is how it would work. You would use that counter done bit to de-energize switch one from controlling light one. So now you may be wondering, well, hey, since now light one is, or switch one is useless, as it's going on and off as I'm flipping it back and forth. How do we go ahead and reset it so we can turn light one back on? Well, you have to make your accumulator go back down to zero. You can do it the manual way by double clicking on the accumulation number and just typing in zero, but there's an easier way to do it with your switches because you're not going to be physically opening the hardware every time. You want it to reset without you having to be in the software. So we're just going to go ahead and add another rung here. And we have our counter, which is over here. So on this rung, I'm going to add in uh, XIC and go ahead and make this switch two. The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to make switch two our counter reset switch. So when I add in switch two, now I have to have some way to reset this counter. If you go back up here to your timer and counter tab, you'll notice that there's some... Uh, extra stuff, the timer on delay, timer off delay, retentative timer on delay, counter up, count down, and there's this reset. This is going to be an output device, much like an OTE, but when you give it an address, you give it the same address as the device that you want to reset. So if I go over here and click, make sure I'm clicked here, so when I click it, it goes to the end. Click on the reset. Now notice it has the question mark. I want to give this the same address as my counter. That way, switch two engages, it will reset my counter back to zero automatically without me having to be in the program. So I can click my counter address, drag it down here to the question mark on the reset, assign it, and finalize my edits. Now, watch what happens when I turn on switch two. Pay attention to the accumulator here because this done bit's energized. So switch one is still useless as I turn it on and off right now. See the switch one turning on, but light one's not coming on. Our done bit's still cutting it off. So I'm going to turn on switch two. So you see our accumulator went back to zero, and our counter done bit up here, the XIC, is now re-energized, letting power through. So now I can turn light one back on, and our counter is counting again. So now... I can count to five again. Now on this fifth one, it will not, it will stay energized for a split second, and but this counter done bit will de-energize it. See, now switch one is basically useless again. 
But if I turn on switch two to energize our counter reset over here, it'll take this accumulator back to zero, thus allowing switch one to do its job. There you go. It's as simple as that. So anyway, that's what function, that's a good function of our counters, especially the CTUs, which is primarily what we'll be using in this course. And that is another way to reset them down here on rung number two with switch two and your counter reset. Like I said, your counter reset and your counter will have the same address, but your bit up here that's cutting it off will be your counter address dot DN symbolizing the done bit for that counter. It's reached its preset count. So I hope this has helped. I really hope you review these videos and watch them before you come in next week to do the counters for the course. Utilize these videos on your midterm and your final and have a wonderful day. Thanks.